Hey guys, uh, welcome back to beautiful Nicaragua. I am here in Managua with my friend Claudio. Hi. Uh, I don't know if you remember Claudio. Claudio has appeared on my channel a couple of times. And today we're going to be talking about some exciting articles that have come out about Nicaragua and kind of where we see the future going here in Nicaragua for tourism and people wanting to visit and even potentially live. So uh, we have three articles we're going to be talking about, uh, some good stuff here. And the first article uh, we're going to talk about here comes from our friends at Nikabiz. Um, this article was published uh, this year in February 23rd. And it says that Nicaraguan tourism income is up by 24% in 2023. So last year, it looks like we went up 24%, more people coming to Nicaragua, more people visiting to spend money. Uh, Claudio, I mean, you running here and working in Managua, did you, did you feel a sense like it was different, like more people coming to the country, or what do you think? Yeah, new people coming, old people coming. Um, some of my clients also that work in tourism, you know, they, they, they run hotels and some, we provide to some coffee shops in the, in the um, beach areas and they all have seen their business grow. So I think, uh, well, part of it is because now people are is traveling again after COVID. That's true. That's also a good point, right? Everyone yeah. broke free after COVID so, and now they're, so, they're moving around. And I, well, a lot of people were like trapped and they wanted to, you know, get away. And we've seen different type of travelers, uh, you know, the travelers that quit their job and travel for, for three months in Latin America. And they start in Mexico, end up maybe in Colombia and mm -hmm. or Peru, but they always stop by Nicaragua. So that's, a, I would say that's a very recurrent type of traveler. Then you have like people that come on holidays specifically. Um, well, it's right there. The U.S. is only two hours, two and a half hours away. Yeah. Um, also, a lot of more flights coming now. I mean, huh? compared to the last time we were talking, mm -hmm. there's more flights like you have Spirit. You have United Airlines has a new flight as mm -hmm. well. So I think that's part of like the, the airline is probably the best indicator to the more flights you see coming to a country. That's when you know that there's more people coming. So, so it was like a combination, right? People being able to travel. And I feel that Nicaragua, of course, in the media is, hasn't always been uh, shed a good light. But I feel that nowadays more people are willing to come explore and see what Nicaragua is about and what it's doing this year, you know? I think it's, a, it's referrals, you know, like yeah. um, it happens to be that uh, a lot of people that come here have already a friend that came here. Mm -hmm. So it's like, for example, we've seen suddenly a lot of Germans, a lot yeah. of uh, Dutch people. But they all know any someone that already visit the country mm -hmm. so they have a positive experience and that person shares the experience with another person and they and they bring more people in i would say so by yeah, word of mouth then huh, word people? of mouth is is part is probably the most the most um important okay for, yeah. but I, yeah i think uh, i i wouldn't say this well, i mean this article says nicaragua but i would say also it's not just Nicaragua, it's El Salvador. Yeah, let's, let's take a look. So in this article, it says right here, here are the most common areas that saw increase here. So yeah. we got El Salvador, 157% increase yeah. on tourism. That's most likely because of the marketing the country has had. And I mean, they just... And the president, they, I think, right? They run the Miss Universe, you know? So, yeah. Um, I think I, I visit myself El Salvador and I'll say like, well, I didn't know how it used to be. Yeah. So a lot of people think, say they was dangerous. A lot of, a lot of things I've heard before, the gang related problems. I didn't feel as a tourist any of that. And I think that's part, partly it's, it's like a new thing that is happening, you know? So they got El Salvador right at, underneath that Nicaragua, 142% followed also, by Guatemala. Salvador is more expensive than Nicaragua. Yeah, yeah. surprisingly, huh? They, and, and they're not that far off, actually, if you think about it. And then, actually, if you look at the top four, all Central American countries, and then followed by Costa Rica, which is 35%, yeah. and then Mexico and Colombia. So it's an interesting dynamic to see that a lot of people are coming to Central America 
uh, for what it looks like. Yeah, well, the, you have to also understand that, I mean, there's global inflation. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are living like, like wh one of the things that COVID left is the remote life. Mm -hmm. That's something we didn't have before. Like, yeah, we had from we, home or we had, anywhere. We had some of that, but not to the extent after COVID. You know? Yeah. So a lot of people are like digital nomads now or they can work remotely from anywhere. Yeah. And, and they, uh, and the, I mean, with the income they can make abroad and the expenses they can have here, that I think is part of the reason that drives people migrating mm -hmm. to, to countries like this. Mexico is already expelling them. I don't know if you saw. Yeah, I saw yeah. there was a, a couple so, of videos that went viral yeah. of... Uh, because it does yeah. affect, like, when you have a, a bunch of people with a different standard of living, a, lot, a different income coming to an area and flooding, it rises the prices up. Yeah, so, so it's, a, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged yeah. sword. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you want the country to have tourism, yeah, but, but then when you, you have want, an influx, you want, you want sustainability. In the you person. want sustainability. You don't want to be overpriced out of your yeah. own. And city. also, it's it's counter intuitive because a lot of people that come, they say, "Oh, I want to go where the tourists are not there. You know, I want to yeah. go not to see more Americans, or I want to yeah. go not to see more gringos." But, well, you are the gringo coming, so it's yeah. like, it's <laughs> tough. yeah. So, it's tough. so, yeah, it's very, it's it's funny how. People want to get away from that, but also they end up going to the same places. So yeah. let's talk about this a little bit here. It says go, like... Go to a cotal where there's no... Where there's no one where I live. One, there's one gringo. That's us. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so interesting part of the article, it says their spending habits and duration. It looks yeah. like an average on 2022, so a person would spend $41 a day. And now in 2023, it went up to 43 to $46. And on average, they would spend 10.6 days in the country. That's yeah. pretty good value if you ask me, $46. But it also depends where you live and where you're doing. It, in, in 10 days, it's $460. Yeah. That's not much. In, where, where are you going to get a vacation for $460 nowadays? But, but realistically, what kind of vacation can you get for $460? Well, here in Nicaragua, you can get a good one. That's what I'm trying to say. Like... If you go to the States for $460, you can get an Airbnb for two days. <laughs> you won't get food, you won't get attractions, you won't get beach, you won't get much. But yeah, but for $460 in Nicaragua, what can you do? For $460 in yeah. 10 days? That's 46. Let's say you find a place to stay, $20 a day. You already have 26 to eat. 26 to what eat. about traveling? Yeah, I mean, you would have to travel and go stay at a certain area, you yeah. know, and not move around too much. So you would be you would be stretched, I guess. You would be running a budget there at forty six dollars a day. It's pretty on the budget. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty on the budget. It's doable. It's possible, but um, I'll, I'll, do, I'll I'll think it depends. The thing is, um, well, that relates more to the other article as well. Yeah, we'll talk about we'll that other article later. after. Um, um, but I think maybe we should we'll jump onto the other article yeah, because, because it, it kind of ties in with yeah. their spending. So the other article is um, it comes from Lonely Planet. Um, Lonely Planet is actually a magazine, right? Or what would you what would you consider Lonely, Lonely Planet? Lonely Planet is is, a, is is well, it's it's a travel company. It's a book. They are uh, they write many books, and many guides, travel guides for almost everywhere in the world that people travels. And they're they're very known and very well. Uh, they have a good reputations. I yeah. met some of the writers myself, and okay. and I thought at the beginning. My, my thinking of Lonely Planet is like, oh, these people, they just go to the beefing path. Yeah. The travelers. The, they go the, everywhere. The riders, no. They go oh, everywhere wow. and they make sure they to, explore. to ride the, the, um, like the real thing, you know. So, like, so you like would if say. They, if they say this coffee is good, it's because they try the coffee. Yeah. So you would say Lonely Planet is a guide for travelers. They're, they're exploring off the beaten paths to write guides for people to yeah. be able to kind of know where to it, go. This is, I would say, it's, it's, it's having the reference of like a first-hand person that went that also have experience traveling. Yeah. They, like, they can see a place and in a matter of seconds, they know what the place is about. You know? So, so in this uh, Lonely Planet website, I'll put the links to everything below there so you guys can check it out. Nicaragua is featured uh, actually as a country for best value. It won an award. Yeah. It, it won 2024 award. It is award. in the top 10 for best value. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not that happy with that 
So we, we kind of see different eye to eye. He's not too happy. Explain. Why aren't you happy okay. about that? Um, I think, I mean, it's cool that we yeah. made it to the list. That's yeah. like applauses. Yeah. Um, but I don't think you promote a country or a con I don't necessarily think a country grows tourism uh, selling itself as, as the cheap country to go, you know, because yeah. the type of people that comes is the people that want to spend the forty six dollars yeah, a day. Very tight, yeah. And very tight. I'm I'm I mean I'm not saying go spend huge amounts, but it's unrealistic. Like yeah. people can like if you tell people that they are gonna find I don't know, a five dollar room. It's unrealistic. Where? Tell me. You get a hammock. <laughs> get a hammock yeah, and tell yeah, it to you me can get a hammock for five dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Or sleep so, on the beach. So uh, I think I think uh, there's you know, of course, there's always different segments. You have backpackers, you have like families traveling, you have people traveling for holidays. It's not the same money when you travel with your family, for example. Yeah. You, br you bring the kid, you bring the wife, you know, you bring when you go with your friends or when you go by yourself, you know. Yeah. It's, it's one can be a different traveler in different times of, of their life. So also, it's not the same when you're 20, that when you're 50, when, when you're 60, you know? Yeah. When you're 60, I bet you don't want to be sandboarded in Cerro Negro. Uh, you never know, man. I might be jumping out. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, also, I've seen people driving their bicycle at yeah. 78. Yeah, you never Chicago, know. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, so you, that, that title, winning that best value, you kind of see it as a good thing, but also as a bad thing because... It, it, it does make sound it, it, it like i mean compared to costa rica we are cheaper that's definitely yeah 100 well, percent. yeah um compared to el salvador we are not we're i mean we are cheaper well, we're cheaper we're yeah. cheaper compared to sorry compared to honduras we are like about the same we're about equal compared to guatemala we are about the same yeah so i'll say price wise uh well in general i don't think you you should visit the country because it's cheap i think you should visit the country because that country has something to offer to you. you I, know? I agree Cause, with that Because you, yeah. you want to learn about the culture, because you yeah. want to learn about, you want to see the places. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. So I think, uh, to your point, Claudio, it says, not, since to, I, not for bargaining. Don't come, yeah, if, you, if you want to go yeah. come for bargaining, that's So, uh, you that's know, I'm, I'm going to say that on my channel here, you, for those of you that follow me or are new watching this video, the common questions that come up was, uh, how much does it cost to live in Nicaragua? Or when I meet with people, they're like, I'm considering Nicaragua because it's cheap. And yeah, that kind of misses the whole point of why you would come to Nicaragua. And there's so much more to this place that's, that's just underrated and not seen and not common that to Claudio's point is when you read articles like that, it's good because we get publicity, but then we're just getting people who are looking to have a good experience for cheap money. Um, and that's kind of... We yeah. want to avoid. We want you to come here more to embrace the people and for the actual culture and the landscapes and, and stuff that you can do here. Yeah, I think also it's cheap for a reason. You know, like <laughs> some sometimes, uh, like for example, let's talk about food. For example, you know, yeah. like yes, yeah, is the other day I went to the market. I spent what eight hundred Cordova. That's like closely twenty one dollars, twenty two dollars. Yeah, and I, and I bought the. Groceries for like all greens, for let's say for a family of four, enough to last maybe two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Of greens. Oh so man. For, this is not me. That's such good value. Yeah. It, but such I'm buying value. from like the source. Yeah, you're buying the right. I can go to the to the supermarket, buy the same things, and spend two thousand. So like six hundred sixty bucks. Still cheap. Yeah. Well, not not so much compared mm -hmm. to the market, but mm -hmm. still cheaper. So. If, if that's the idea of cheap, yes, you can buy food for, yeah. for, because we produce it. But the moment you're going to buy something we don't produce, let's say you're going to buy, I don't know. Uh, an, an, Oysters. Uh, olive oil. Yeah, olive oil. Wine, wine. Wine, oh. The, the cheap wine that you get at home here is three times the price. It's three like, times the price. Like yeah. uh, I'm not going to say a brand, but like a, a table wine in California could be what uh ten dollars ten dollars that is a premium here for 30 40. yeah and it's they sell it as premium so this is when it it becomes expensive to live here like when you when you want like the kind the, what kind of quality of life you want to have like it, if you want to go to have medical treatment for example then that comes at a cost yeah. that cost is not cheap so 
it's the amenities, right? If you need to, if Nicaragua yeah. needs to import stuff, it becomes costly. And so if you come here expecting the same amenities as the U.S. or yeah, Canada, yeah, yeah, please, yeah. you're going to pay two to three X more here uh, for that stuff. And it goes for electronics too, certain yeah, electricity. specific. Electricity, we have one of the most expensive electricity yeah. in the region. So if you, want, if, if you want to come here and have the AC on all day, you'll, see it, you'll see it in yeah. the So in it's, the it's, it's an interesting dynamic. Food is cheap but it can get expensive, depends on what you're looking for. Now, yeah. so, so we got a little sidetracked there with the, with the value no, travel. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that it's, it's always how you see it. Like, yeah. you, you, we have places where you can eat for, I, I eat, no, I, yeah, I eat for yeah. like five quarters of a chalupa in, in León. I don't know what's in the chalupa. I don't know how <laughs> can they make it five quarters. Yeah, five quarters. You and I know I have a good so stomach cheap. because That's so cheap. I, it didn't give me anything. But yeah. I wouldn't advise people to be eating chalupas for five cordobas. Five cordobas, like, yeah. Like, if you do that with, you, like, with your stomach, I don't know if you can... Did die. you survive? Did you I, get sick? I am here. You're here. <laughs> You're alive. <laughs> You're yeah. alive. Don't eat five cordoba chalupa <laughs> if you have a poor stomach. Oh, my God. But, I mean, that's, it's, that's, that's the truth. That's the truth. But also, you can get a steak in a nice steakhouse for $50, $50 you know? Yeah. So what is the meaning of cheap? Like if you want to get the New York Revive steak better probably than the steak, that's $50 yeah. in a good place. That's true. Well, but, Nicaragua but exports get, meat, right? Nicaragua exports meat, so, it exports so meat, yeah. it's, it's reasonable so still here to buy good would meat. Would that steak be more expensive in the States? I bet. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, so if you want good stuff, it co it's going to cost you. Not maybe the same as in your home, but it's, it's going to cost. And if you want... The chalupa of five cordobas, well, you can also do that. Or you, or you don't have to eat the chalupa of five cordobas. You can have, like, I, I would say, the, right now, like a normal price for, for a plate could be between the 150 to the 250 range. So how that's, many dollars is that? The 150? That's like, that's like from 3.5 to 6, Yeah, 3.5 to, to $7, seven. yeah, to, for this a meal. Is, this is not a restaurant. This is... A fritanga type. Fritanga, yeah. yeah. It's you, like sort of fast food, yeah. but not really fast food. Um, yeah, restaurant, it will be like between 10 and 20. Yeah. I would say. Like a nice restaurant. Yeah, yeah a, ni a nice restaurant between 20, 20 per Like person. a nice steak or something. See. Uh, and then anything then over that, I think is more like more markup price yeah. and more like fancy stuff. But yeah, you have all. You have all the prices. So, so although Nicaragua perceives itself or, or people see it as a value country, it can get expensive if you are... If you want good stuff. If you want good stuff, you know, <laughs> yeah. so... And it can also be a good value country if you, if you know what to look for and what to eat, like those five dollars, five cents but as I said, as I said, good stuff is relative as well because it's like, I mean, if you cook at home and you don't go out, well, you, you just spend the money in the market. Yeah. And you're not going to spend much. No, in the market. market no, you, your but money you, will stretch a lot I, further. I imagine that when people come, they want to have, they want to go out, they want to go eat, they want to go do the things, they want to, you know, do the things, not just be cooking at home. So, Man. Yeah. Um, so let's rate it. This article from Lonely Planet, good or bad for Nicaragua? Seven. What's your word? Seven. It's a seven, so you're a seven. little bit better, right? Seven. Yeah. I think it's good for Nicaragua. But I see Claudio's opinions there. We need you guys to comment I mean, below. There's, there's no such a thing as bad publicity. That's true. That's also a good point. So we need we need your feedback there below, guys. Let us know. It's it's it's, it's the I think it's controversial. You know, some yeah. people can say it's not. So Claudio's saying, don't come here if you're gonna spend forty dollars. Come here if you have five hundred dollars a day to spend. Okay. So, so <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, no, we really want to know below, what do you think? If you've been to Nicaragua, did you come because you saw it as a value country to come to? There's no, no issues with that, just be honest. Or did you come here because you want to explore somewhere new? Or what's your opinion on that article? What do you think? Is it good for Nicaragua or not? So I think we should uh, move on to the other article. The other article. Yeah, let's check it out. So this next article is going to be good for you if you're a surfer or you're coming to Nicaragua to hit the beaches. Because what's happening in Nicaragua is they're building a new coastal highway or trail or freeway. What, do you, what would you call it's it? It's called the Costanera Road. The Costanera, this so a road. Co coastal oh. highway. 
So it's, it's going to follow along the Pacific. Do you know where it's going to start? Well, uh, I think it's starting in Las Salinas all the way to the end to Costa Rica. All to, the way to Costa Rica. So All the way to the last beach, I think it's El Naranjo. So can you explain to us why is this a big deal? Well, first, it's a, it's a no idea. Mm -hmm. It's not now. You know? yeah. It's like this is my dad has been telling me about La Costanera for years. And, and, and I think, well, it's... Is again a debatable project. I mean, there is already a Costanera in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen it. No, I haven't seen it's it. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you, it's, it's literally a road that is very close to the beach. That's, nice. that's, that's, that's kind of like California Pacific Highway One. It's just right on the beach. Okay, so you just this one is like a little bit further from the beach, but that's the the idea. Is the yeah. idea is that you can go from beach to beach to beach. Non-stop. More efficiently. Efficiently, yeah. Because right, right now, now there's no connection, right? The, the, the roads exist, but it's like poorly, some of some are dirt roads. Yeah. Um, you have to go around into cities. You have to cities. go around in the city, yeah, so it's not straight line. Yeah. So they are just going to like join them together and make it paved, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of debate on that because, you know, like a, lo like a lot of people say it with positive eyes, a lot of people say it like, what about the environmental impact of those roads, you know? Yeah. Because they, they is in on the Nival that there, there's always an environmental impact That's when you true. make a construction of that type. And they are gonna have to take down trees and go through areas. Also, what is gonna happen after with all the influx of people, cars and stuff that is gonna Yeah, transit. so it could have a positive effect and no, also the, the positive is economical. Economical yeah. for yeah. sure. But then the negative side, I mean, I really see it for the people that currently live there, like the blue collar workers that have a little house and they live with their family. Mm. Now you so, might have an influx of people coming to buy property. Whenever there's a project like this type, it creates a speculation mm -hmm. and it creates that what you're saying. You know, it's like, oh, it means if my land is worth this right now with that row is going to be worth this. Yeah, because that's how people think, you mm -hmm. know, it's like, oh, now I'm going to be next to the road. It's yeah, premium, it's, premium it real up. estate. Yeah, yeah, and it starts it, driving prices. It used to be around. a farm. Now it can be a store, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's true, though. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, with that mentality, you know, that's already creating some buzz and people are like buying. Mm -hmm. um, I'm afraid of the impact in the longer term, which is the, the, the gentrification that can cost, you know, like, because it's, it's not that, like, for example, in Costa Rica, they, they meet the same Costa Ricans, sometimes they complain about like how everything is now more expensive for them yeah. like to go to the beach. They say it's better for me to go to Nicaragua because I spend the same and I go to a new country. Yeah. So right now, Nicar we, we are happy going to the beach as yeah, Nicaragua. Yeah, it so, doesn't cost much, it's accessible, it cost, yeah, it's still so, remote, untouched. Yeah. But if that changes, I, I don't know if people are going to like La Costanera yeah. or are going to like that kind of development, you know. So, so far, I would say people are happy with tourism. Mm -hmm. and well, we, as travelers, we, we should I guess. Keep that, you know? yeah. <laughs> we should keep that. And, and of course, in, investment is always good uh, if it has a sustainability aspect. That means, you know, training people, employing the local people, uh, not just making things for the tourists to come, but also include the locals mm -hmm. in, in the businesses. You know, I think uh, it's the only sustainable way. Otherwise, it's going to be like Nicaragua for the foreigners. You yeah, know? exactly. So right and now it's not like that, but it could get like that. You know? It could get like that. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, I think that's what makes Nicaragua special, though, in terms of its culture and its mm -hmm. local people just being right. This next is to why the you have to protect. And we have to. Uh, this is what this yeah, is. The, it's a the, balance. This is the differentiator. When people come to Nicaragua and they see, oh, I love the, co the country because it's authentic. Well, the moment you flip the switch on, like, open the gates and bring, like, I don't know, all the cruises again, oh, you know, it yeah. changes. It the, changes, it the, changes the place. Yeah. So it's like um, you want to keep the culture intact. And, and yes, we're happy with, with being able to go to the beach faster, for mm -hmm. example. That's, that's something, imagine, you know, the, the change that can be. And you know? we can go to even more beaches even now. Even more beaches, Because yeah. we can just hit the coastal trail so, yeah. and yeah. it's going to be an interesting next few years or but, decade for Nicaragua. Yeah, so hopefully the people that is 
always living in the road, they are the ones that benefit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, it's, as I said, it's, it creates a speculation, you know. So as a traveler, if you're watching this and you're coming to Nicaragua, I think that would benefit you, though, in the sense that you can travel all these beaches and, and check out more of Nicaragua. If you see Costa Rica, they did it years ago and it has worked perfectly. Yeah, and it's worked perfectly. Yeah, so. um, and also, I mean, I don't know, they're always a step ahead. And well, we already have a road that goes parallel or semi-parallel, but it mm. doesn't go inside. Inside the beach inside area. The beaches the area. It's like you have to always travel more. So yeah. it, it's not that efficient. Yeah. Yeah. But well, as you say, like once there's there's this road, like for example, just to have an idea, like right now, if you go to from San Juan del Sur, mm -hmm. which is like one of the main beaches and you want to go to Popoyo, you will have to go first to Rivas, then to Tola and then to Popoyo. That will take you about uh, roughly an hour and a half. Yeah, it's a long loop. By car. That is going to probably go half, half in time. Yeah, it's wild how, more, how much more efficient it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it's, gonna be like yeah. a that's gonna be like a thirty minute trip or like a forty yeah. like a like a I'm actually kinda minute, excited actually no, fifty minutes yeah. Realistically fifty minutes. But yeah, it will allow people to it will like the beaches are gonna be more interesting because like right now if you can only in your trip if you can only see one, two, three beaches, but now you're gonna be able to see seven. Eight yeah. beaches wow. in different sides of the country. So that's, that's very cool. going to open the door to so many more things. Yeah, so like we'll you, can, the, you can be like having breakfast in one beach and then surfing yeah. in the other beach the same day, you know. So I, I, need, I need to know below, do you guys want a video of us going to check out the road? It's under construction now, but we can go take a glimpse and then uh, kind of report it back to you guys on how that'd that would be cool. That'd be cool, right? Yeah. That'd be pretty cool to go check out and progress. Let us know below if you want that video for the road. I mean, exciting times. I think it'll be an interesting next decade or so for Nicaragua. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this video, us talking about Nicaragua. We really wanted to sit down and just bring you guys into conversation with us. I definitely thank Claudio here. He's, uh, he's my Nicaraguan guru. Uh, that We just always talk ideas and latest news and what's coming and trends. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, uh, Claudio. He lives in Managua. Um, I'll put his link to his Instagram if you want to contact him for anything, want to buy some cacao or coffee or have questions about sourcing chocolate, uh, cacao, cacao for chocolate, then he can help you uh, with that too. So I'll see you guys in the next video and cheers from Nicaragua.